This video explains the basic concepts and mechanisms of live 2D cubism using simple diagrams. Live 2D is a tool that allows users to directly animate illustrations. Everything from modeling to animation can be completed with a single editor. The completed data can be made into a video or exported as a file for use in apps or games. So, let's get started with Live 2D Cubism Editor. When the editor opens, you will see a screen like this. Illustration data can be imported either by selecting PSD data from File, Open, in the Home dialog box, or by dragging and dropping a file into the canvas. When PSD data is imported, an illustration is placed on the canvas as an art mesh divided into polygons. Information about the imported layers is displayed in the Parts palette in the upper left corner. An art mesh is a collection of polygons, a mesh, composed of vertices and lines. By moving each of these vertices, the image can be deformed to create expressions and movement. The PSD images that are imported into the editor are automatically allocated a mesh for each layer and are arranged on the canvas. When a layer is selected from the parts palette, the art mesh in the canvas is also selected. The art mesh in the canvas can also be selected by clicking on it directly. When the art mesh is selected, a red bounding box appears around it. By deforming the box, the art mesh can also be deformed. Objects can also be deformed by editing the mesh vertex positions that divide the art mesh. There are two types of mesh editing, auto generation which enables automatic generation of meshes by simply specifying values related to the density of vertices, and edit manually which allows vertices to be edited by placing them one by one. Fine adjustments can also be made manually after auto generation. If the mesh is roughly divided, only a rough deformation is possible. Therefore, for precise deformations, the mesh must be divided more finely. A finer mesh allows more precise adjustment of the shape. However, the number of vertices is increased, making adjustment more difficult. The data also becomes larger, so finding the right mesh mapping balance for each movement is essential. Parameters can be set for the art mesh. A parameter is a setting that expresses a specific movement, such as angle X or mouth open. With the art mesh selected, click on the parameter to which you want to add motion. After the parameter turns gray and is selected, press add two keys or add three keys at the top. A key specifies a point that exists in the parameter. Here, click Add Two Keys. When two green points appear on the parameter, motion can be added. Try deforming the art mesh. After a parameter is moved, it returns to its initial shape while interpolating the intermediate shapes. The green point parameters that save the initial shape can also be edited in the same way. To store a shape consisting of two or more points, click Edit Key Form and add a key. To return to the original shape, click the Modeling menu, Edit Form, Revert to Original. In this way, Parameters can be used to add movement to an art mesh, thereby changing the facial expressions or moving the face of the live 2D model. This part remains fundamentally the same for everything from simple models to complex models.
parameters can be used to add movement to more than just the art mesh. Live2D has a deformer function that can collectively edit multiple art mesh vertices and set parameters. The deformer function is useful when you want to add multiple movements to a single art mesh or when you want to move multiple vertices at the same time. There are two types of deformers. Warp deformers are specialized for deformation, and rotation deformers are specialized for rotation. Next, let's actually create a deformer and deform the art mesh. First, create a warp deformer. From the top menu, select Create Warp Deformer. The settings screen appears. For now, leave the settings as they are and click Create. You have now created a warp deformer. Next, let's add an art mesh to the created warp deformer. Select the art mesh to add, and then from Inspector Palette, select the warp deformer you want to add. When the warp deformer is moved after an art mesh is added, the art mesh will move together with the warp deformer. The warp deformer can also be deformed into a curved surface by moving the division points and handles. If the contained illustration does not deform neatly when the warp deformer is deformed, the mesh may not have been finely divided. If this happens, try dividing the mesh again. Next, let's create a Rotation Deformer. Select Create Rotation Deformer from the top menu and click Create. You have now created a Rotation Deformer. Next, let's add an Art Mesh in the same way as the Warp Deformer. Unlike a Warp Deformer, partial deformation is not possible with a Rotation Deformer even when an Art Mesh is added. Rotating, zooming in and out, and changing the opacity however, is possible. The advantages of a rotation deformer are the ability to decide a start point for rotating the art mesh and specifying the rotation angle. For these reasons, rotation deformers are primarily used to rotate the arms, legs, and other parts of a model. You can also add a child deformer to a lower level and set up a parent-child hierarchy. Layering deformers and combining motions in this way makes it possible to create a wide variety of movements. You can also freely add or remove an art mesh to or from this deformer. Use the deformer palette to check which art mesh has been added to which deformer. When adding motion to a parameter, take the parameter to animation to add movements. Switch workspace to animation from the upper left corner of the screen. After switching, create a new animation file and drag the created model file onto the timeline palette to import it. When moving the parameters, keyframes will be placed in the timeline. Place several keyframes and try making the model actually move. When played back, the model moves following the placed keyframes. To adjust the model file again, switch back to the modeling workspace from the upper left corner of the screen. Try adjusting parameter 1. To use an adjusted model file, switch from the modeling workspace to the animation workspace. You can now use the adjusted model file in the animation. The animation you created can be exported as a PNG or JPEG image sequence, or as a GIF, MP4, MOV, or other video. You can also export the animation as motion data for the created model. That's it. This concludes the diagram-based explanation. To learn more or to create an actual model, please refer to the basic tutorial videos and manual website.